Hey, remember how back in the 19th century this guy, Edward Cope, named a dinosaur Lyolaps, but then that turned out to already be the name of a parasitic mite, and so his arch-rival, Othniel Marsh, found out and was able to scoop him by renaming it? Well, it turns out that right around the very same time, Marsh also discovered and described this dinosaur, calling it Camptonotus, which you've probably never heard of before because that already happened to be the name of a cricket. And so it also had to be renamed. It's day 11 of Dino November, and luckily for Marsh, he was able to rename the thing himself instead of also being scooped by his arch rival. And so now we have this dinosaur called Camptosaurus. It lived in North America and maybe also England in the late Jurassic and grew about 15 to 20 feet long. Although apparently the occasional extra large Camptosaurus fossil does sometimes turn up. So maybe the uh, absolute largest individuals could have reached up to 28 feet long. It also had spiky thumbs like the more famous Iguanodon, although those in Camptosaurus were much smaller. And it also had four somewhat more hoof-like claws on each hand, and that, combined with a very solidly built wrist, suggests that although its four limbs were much smaller than its hind limbs, it probably spent most of its time walking around on all four legs. But it could have reared up on just its back too, from time to time to move more quickly. That being said, it was almost certainly slower than the predators it lived with, like Allosaurus, and it was also smaller than Allosaurus, and its thumb spikes probably too little to do much good as a defensive weapon. So how did Camptosaurus not just get absolutely taken advantage of all the time as an easy food source. Well, they probably were one of the more reliable food sources for medium to large predators of the time, but one thing that Camptosaurus had going for itself as a species was it seems that they were pretty common. So for any particular individual, there is probably a statistical safety in numbers. And in addition to that, Camptosaurus probably spent a great deal of time feeding in the dense foliage of more forested areas within the Morrison Basin. In this shadowy environment, protective coloration may have helped conceal individuals from predators. As per usual, comment what dinosaur I should talk about next, and I'll see you in tomorrow's episode of Dinovember.